Chrissy, as if it wasn't enough, enough to lose your sense of smell uh, from a virus, yep. um, some people have an additional problem on top of that, parosmia afterwards. And you experienced the same thing. Can, can you tell us what it was like? I, yes, I did have parosmia. And uh, I, for me, it sort of came along about five, four or five months in. I started experiencing these sort of weird um, background, unpleasant background smells that were unpleasant. But then in time, they became dramatically worse to the point where I really couldn't eat anything anymore. Um, and that is a really, really uh, difficult problem to live with. It just sucks the life out of you. You can no longer go to a supermarket because the supermarket smells. Uh, planning meals is a challenge. Cooking uh, for a family is uh, really difficult. And then of course there's the problem of not even being able to feed yourself. So if you get to the point where you cannot eat anything without feeling nauseous, and that does happen, uh, then you need to sort of consider some, some new strategies. Can you explain, for, I, I've never had parosmia, what, what, what is it like? I mean, the definition is a, is a twisting or, a, yeah. or a, a distortion of the sense of smell. Exactly. Uh, there are certain smells more than others which become incredibly distorted and smells all take on a kind of sewagey, filthy, dirty, uh, putrid smell. Uh, uh, really uh, impossible to describe, um, d just incredibly unpleasant. And, and when it's happening to you, it's all the time. It's 24 hours a day. Um, the only thing I can think of that might give you an idea is if you were living in California when they had all the forest fires and everything smelled like smoke. It's that kind of omnipresent, always with you, always making you feel like you're going to choke. So it's, it's a terrible, terrible thing to live with. Uh, we had plenty of people with parosmia uh, in our original Facebook group, but what we're starting to see now is a dramatic increase in COVID-19 patients who have parosmia. Just in the same way that I started hearing about the pandemic initially coming from patients who were coming into my Facebook group and through Twitter from Iran and then later Italy, I'm seeing now a great increase in cases of parosmia from those two countries, so I think this will probably come to us as well. So this can be a real problem for, for people who've now lost their sense of smell. Now they're getting something back, but it's horrible. Yep. It's, um, eating is difficult. Mm. Smelling things they used to really like to smell is difficult. Can we do anything for them? I think that uh, there are some things that you can do to mitigate the parosmia that you do have. The first thing that you need to do is find out what foods are most triggering for you. Um, we have a good idea of what these are already. Um, so uh, an initial list uh, will probably include coffee, um, cooking meat, uh, anything that's being browned, anything deep fried, um, eggs very often. Um, that, that's, a, that's a sort of a good idea of the things that are, are really triggering, but everyone has their own uh, that they find offensive. Um, and avoid those foods. The second thing you can do is to eat room temperature or cool food uh, because those foods have few, fewer volatile molecules coming off them so it's just a, a much less smelly experience. For people who really feel that they cannot eat, um, and I'm collecting some, uh, some comments from this within the Facebook page right now, but uh, I think that unflavored protein shakes are a good solution, good mid -terms, uh, midway solution, um, as well as other bland foods. So that might be rice, pasta, bread can be very problematic, so I wouldn't recommend that, but if it works for you, then definitely go with, go with bread. Um, but start with the simplest, blandest foods and then build into that. 